even i took up anything and everything that came for the first 3 years the third to fifth year was were the deciding factors that actually shaped up my practice as far as what work i'm doing today he is into four things first is international taxation second is forensics third he helps businesses set their businesses in uae and fourth is crypto pehla client kaisa aayega either you talk in seminars or you write blogs and third you become active on social media if you are a net consumer of content you may not get your clients taxation system in india is a little vague a person who is honestly paying full taxes also would end up getting some notice some scrutiny from the income tax department to to add more to their misery in gst if the opposite person from whom you have dealt with forgets to pay tax or refuses to pay tax after collecting tax from you your input tax credit is disallowed there are at least another 10 or 15 different compliances which a person has to do every 3 months and 4 times in a year you have to pay advance tax once a year you file your income tax return once in a year you probably get an audit if you are doing good business maybe 12 times in a year you file your gst returns apart from that there's pf pt esic for which you have to do regular compliances if you are a business you have to pay tds 12 times in a year and you have to file returns four times in a year one nri walked into my office and asked me that he wanted to start a business i told him sir it will take at least 2 months to incorporate an llp because the roc portal is not working aapne agar form upload kar bhi liya to error aayegi error ko rectify kiya tab tak aapka time lapse ho jayega फिर वापस फॉर्म को अपलोड करने की कोशिश करोगे तो आपका फॉर्म अपलोड नहीं होगा आप उनके कॉल सेंटर पे फोन करोगे तो देवेश रेजर टिकट बट टू रेजर टिकट अगेन यू हैव टू गो ऑन द पोर्टल व्हिच इज नॉट वर्किंग साउंडेड मच लाइक दैट मुन्ना भाई सीन वेयर ही वाज सेइंग दैट दैट यू नो एप्लीकेशन राउंड एंड राउंड राउंड एंड घूमता रहेगा सो समथिंग लाइक दैट दिस इज द पेन ऑफ बिजनेसेस इन इंडिया there is genuinely ease of doing business in other countries more so compared to india hats off to each and every business which is still there in india and hats off to each and every chartered accountant who supporting these businesses we are like the agents of the government who without getting any remuneration from the government we are helping collect revenue for the government by hello everyone welcome to new episode of the ca podcast all the guests till now are in a way doing service in an industry okay so people asked me like koi practicing chartered accountant ka bhi interview kar do yaar abhi so i was looking at someone who are practicing but doing something different and that's when i stumbled upon vivek shah's profile and it's really really interesting to see ki what different things a chartered accountant can do even in practice because usually we think ki yaar practice hai to ek typical kind of practice hi rahegi but waisa nahi hai and that's what we are going to discuss today and i welcome vivek shah he is practicing chartered accountant but he is not into something very traditional so what he is into so he is into four things first is international taxation second is forensics third is that he helps businesses set their businesses in uae and fourth is crypto so all these fascinating things we will understand how he manages all these things and what kind of skills are required what kind of things he looks forward to and yes and everything related to the business related to the profession and whatever thoughts he has in mind we will understand uh, what kind of challenges are there in this kind of new style of practicing so Welcome Vivek Shah what's up how are you Hi thanks for having me on your podcast and uh, thank you very much for having me address your audience in this podcast today Great so let's start with understanding your story okay so you said that you uh, didn't want to enter into any kind of job you directly wanted to go into practice and you did that so how did mm-hmm. that thing happened because usually people people don't have this kind of idea right usually people go with the flow ki wherever yeah. people are going in say like job kar rahe to job kar rahe practice is something of late has been out of fashion we can say so correct, how correct, correct. you landed up here but before that let us go back in time and understand your ca journey what was your article sure. experience like and all these things whatever you can share in the next 2 3 minutes we'll be happy Sorry. to listen to sure So uh, one of the biggest reasons why I got into practice uh, immediately after passing is because I failed my final CA exam twice. So when okay. I failed the exam twice I had enough time to think as to what I want to do in life. Oh. And that's when I realized that the place where I did my article ship which was one of the big four I really didn't want to join there and get into that grind of working in one of the big four forever for the rest of my life. Okay. So that's when I decided that I wanted to do something of my own 
and i saw that there was a huge gap between the kind of services that uh, small and medium enterprises uh, ca firms are giving to smes in the country and mm-hmm. i thought that what if i implement those best practices that i've learned in one of the big four firms where i did my article ship and if i if i try to implement them in my prospective clients that i would get so i think that the failure of uh, failing in final ca twice gave me enough time to think because had i cleared it everything in the first attempt i would have just take up and taken up a job in the same place where i was working okay okay now let's come directly to the main question what do you do and uh, yeah. you said that these are the four things that you do but uh, how did you think about all those things because usually people yeah. will say ki yaar practice itna you know if you want to start a practice then you will yes. end up getting all the kinds of jobs like tax return bhi karo sure. bank audit bhi karo ye bhi karo wo bhi karo mm-hmm. and uh, specialization is something which is generally uh, kept with or is with the big fours or a bigger firms where you know there are multiple partners so ek koi to specialized okay. partner hota hai do that but partner can look after say valuation or some other fancy okay. stuff okay. but how did you start with this kind of journey into a very niche area true so i think i think it's a very good uh, question to ask because whenever a person is starting out fresh even i took up anything and everything that came for the first 3 years because okay. in the first 3 years it is all about survival and continuation of your firm so if you and you know one person one senior person very uh, very senior person advised me that vivek if you can stay in an industry for 1000 days that means that you are there to stay for the remaining 10000 days also so <laughs> i took that advice and for the first 3 years i did whatever came to me but after the third year is when i realized that uh, now i want to concentrate on specific areas only hmm. so so that was a time that was the third to fifth year was were the deciding factors that actually shaped up my practice as far as what work i'm doing today now coming to the fields that i'm working in forensic is something that i was always interested in even while i was doing my article ship i used to look at various uh, uh, fraud uh, analysis various case studies where frauds were happening and it, i think it was a matter of uh, chance and mm-hmm. luck also to some extent because in my very first year uh, within the first 6 months one of the assignments that i got was forensic audit wow now the only thing that i knew was that i i knew that i had to put in efforts to get to the crux of the matter but eventually the report that i submitted to the client he was so happy that he recommended me to 10 other people and out of those 10 two came and wow. then it was a chain reaction where people mm. re- recommend you and uh, since since we are chartered accountants uh, doing advertising is not uh, allowed as per our code of ethics i don't know how uh, how absurd is that rule but nevertheless it is a rule so we must follow yeah but having said that uh you can always write as a as a chartered accountant there nothing prohibits you from writing a blog or nothing prohibits mm. you from disseminating information mm. so you can make videos you can write you can talk you can get invited to various seminars and you can spread knowledge so right. that also adds a lot of credibility to the work that you are doing because you can get more reach by using the traditional methods of uh, branding i will not say marketing mm. because again marketing is also not allowed but branding So you create right. a brand value for yourself, and uh, you need to be very you, you need to be visible. A lot of people mm-hmm. may think that social media पे जाके शायद उतनी visibility वो professionals को मिले या ना मिले. But mm-hmm. I would like to correct that perception that it is only and only social media in today's day and age where right. you will find your prospective clients if you use it effectively. If you are a net consumer of content, you may not get your clients. But if mm-hmm. you are a creator of content and if you keep on disseminating information, there is a very high possibility and a probability that you will get your future clients. Uh, through social media as a part of the podcast i uh, spoke with someone who is into brand consultation and all those things so she uh, she herself is a chartered accountant and uh, she also told the same thing like you cannot brand you cannot market uh, the services but you can obviously create your own brand and uh, uh, people Correct. watching there this can you know go back to that particular video and understand the lessons like how to brand yourself so that is something which i would recommend but uh, you said it right like we, nobody stops mm. us from creating content or you know disseminating that information into different parts where people can understand and then they, that can turn you know that can be our potential client also so from that angle now let's uh, i think let's go back to the four things or the four pillars of your organization i would say now sure. forensic the uae business uh, international yes. taxation and crypto 
So let's go to them one by one. You said that you got sure. a forensic assignment in the first years and then that kind of led to word of mouth publicity and then things happen that uh, yeah. now you are specialized in that particular area. The second Correct. thing, let's go about say international taxation first. So how did you thought about this particular area? Correct. So uh, before I go to international taxation, I'll first talk about UAE. Okay. So somewhere in 2016, my clients had a requirement to set up some businesses in UAE. Hmm. So in order to understand that, I had to study what are the implications of international taxation. So that's how the work started. So okay. as far as UAE work and international taxation are concerned, hmm. they actually went hand in hand. And even before that, somewhere in 2014 and 15, my clients were doing deals of uh, merger and acquisition in Hong Kong, China, Malaysia and Japan. And okay. I got exposure to those deals as well. I was an advisor to them. Uh, uh, so because of which, again, I had to study a lot about the provisions of international taxation and that's mm. how I got into international taxation and that's how the work for international taxation also flew on the advisory side or on the consultancy side. Mm -hmm. Come 2016, since 2016, I've been helping people set up their businesses in UAE and believe me, everyone is extremely happy that they got correct advice to diversify or to set up some form of entity in UAE because it's a very open economy. Uh, there was never any tax back then. Now there is a 9% corporate tax and a 5% VAT, but still that is one of the lowest in the region and mm -hmm. probably one of the lowest in the uh, tax paying uh, world. Right, right. Considering, considering the demand, I saw that there was a potential uh, and there was a demand where mm -hmm. Indian businesses, which were, which wanted to expand globally uh, by, by setting up a business in UAE, they could achieve those goals. Hmm. Now, it is not that by, by having presence in India, you cannot go global. You surely can go global. There is nothing that prohibits you from going global. But the country is such that there are so many, there is, there are so many opportunities which are available. Hmm. And you know, I always tell my clients that going to UAE should never be about tax planning or tax saving. That's a very small aspect of the entire larger scheme of events that you can think of. The opportunity for good service providers or for good products is exponentially high over there. There is less competition and more demand. So that is, okay. that is a perfect mix that can help any business and more so for service providers and more so for uh, even practicing chartered accountants like us now, because there is VAT and there is corporate tax also in the UAE mm. now. So, so my suggestion to everyone is that do explore that as an opportunity. And if I can be of any help, please reach out to me. Wow. Awesome. So, uh, yeah. now again about the UAE thing that you said. I've read a couple of uh, articles around it that a lot of businesses or a lot of HNIs are now migrating to UAE. Yes, there is a good opportunity for us to, you know, explore that area. But is there any reason why people are shifting to? Is it just the tax planning or tax perspective or is there any other angle to it? Uh, okay, so without prejudice, you know, I would say that the taxation system in India is a little vague. You know, uh, even if you pay all taxes honestly, you cannot assure as a professional or as a chartered accountant, you cannot assure your clients that there won't be any scrutiny or any further harassment in future. Mm. Uh, add, add faceless assessments to that. In faceless assessments, you don't even get a proper opportunity to explain everything to the officer. What is your perspective and why a particular transaction was done in a particular manner? Mm. Add more to it as far as, uh, so this is, uh, uh, this is pertaining to startups. There is something called as angel tax under section 5627. If, if, a, if a person receives money from an investor, which is over and above the fair value of the uh, shares, you hmm. are supposed to pay 30% tax as a company, plus uh, the person who has paid money to you will also have to pay tax. So these are regressive taxation right. policies which are present in India. A person who is honestly paying full taxes also would end up getting some notice, some scrutiny from the income tax department to, to add more to their misery. In GST, if the opposite person from whom you have dealt with forgets to pay tax or refuses to pay tax after collecting tax from you, hmm. your input tax credit is disallowed. Now right. that is also highly unfair. You've paid your taxes, right? You've paid your tax, you don't have to pay your tax, you don't have to pay your tax, you don't have to pay your tax. You don't have to pay your tax. Why do you want to pay your tax? And, and, and again, to add more to their misery, in spite of uh, income, tax and, uh, income tax and GST, there are at least another 10 or 15 different compliances which a person has to do. I will just name them over here. I'll just try to put a number to the number of compliances. Every four months, every three months and four times in a year, you have to pay advanced tax. Once a year, you file your income tax return. Once in a year, you probably get an audit if you're doing good business. Uh, maybe 12 times in a year, you file your GST returns. 
Apart from that, there's PF, PT, ESIC, uh, for which you have to do regular compliances if you're a business. Apart from that, there is TDS returns. Uh, you have to pay TDS 12 times in a year and you have to file returns four times in a year. So, so just try and understand where is the right. ease of doing business. And I believe that hats off to each and every business which is still there in India and hats off to each and every chartered accountant who's supporting these businesses. Right. Because we are helping the government in revenue collection. Hmm. We are like the agents of the government who without getting any remuneration from the government, <laughs> we are helping collect revenue for the government by way of direct and indirect taxes. Yeah. Yeah. So when we talk about ease of doing business, yes, we have come a long way from where we were maybe uh, 10 or 20 years ago. And we have, a, but we still have a very long way to go as far as ease of doing business is concerned. I will right. share a very small story. Hmm. One NRI walked into my office and asked me that he wanted to start a business. I told him, sir, it will take at least two months to incorporate an LLP because the ROC portal is not working. <laughs> the ROC portal is, is perpetually is perpetually in hibernation mode. Chalta hai nahi hai. Aapne agar form upload kar bhi liya, to error aayegi. Error ko rectify kiya, tab tak aapka time lapse ho jayega. Fir wapis form ko upload karne ko koshish karo ke, tab aapka form upload nahi hoga. Aap unke call center pe phone karo ke, so they will say raise a ticket. But to raise a ticket again, you have to go on the portal which is not working. So, so it is an endless <laughs> It's an endless loop to do business in India, but, uh, but nevertheless, uh, as chartered accountants, it is our duty to advise correctly to our clients mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, irrespective, irrespective of whatever is the level of compliance or whatever, whether there is ease or not that I think businesses have to decide, but we as chartered accountants can only advise our clients what is best for them. And in today's day and age, uh, doing business in other countries, because my clients are there in other countries, I can say this with a lot of confidence. There is genuinely ease of doing business in other countries. Hmm. more so compared to india and uh, and i'm sure india will, india is improving on a, a daily basis and india uh, uh, has a goal in mind to uh, facilitate businesses but there are certain things which are bureaucratic hurdles which cannot be overcome because we've lived that way for the last 75 years since independence but uh, having said that i i think there is light at the end of the tunnel as far as doing businesses in, in india is also concerned right right the pace at which you were talking about all those things, it sounded much like that uh, Munna Bhai scene where he was saying that, <laughs> that ki, aap idhar jao, ye udhar bolta hai, udhar nahi hai, idhar jao, aur phir application round and round, round and ghumta <laughs> rahega. So something like that. Hey, is Sofnil, this, is, this is the pain of businesses in India. And I can say that because yeah. I only I can only empathize with them. Like yeah. imagine you have to file so many returns, so many compliances, aur uske teen, char saal baad aapko scrutiny ki notice aati hai to explain what you did four years ago. Hmm. And you still have to answer. Because you're an honest and a tax paying citizen of the country and a compliant citizen, you still have to answer to all the uh, queries that they have, give explanation for each and every document, each and every expenditure. Why did you spend money on your petrol for your car? You still have to explain that. <laughs> Why did you eat in a restaurant with a client? You have to explain that. And if the invoice is not that the uh, assessing officer in his own wisdom may, uh, may, may, may disallow those expenditures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So basically you are saying ki, uh, ease of doing business is not that great in India, right? As of today. And that is the main reason uh, for, you know, people migrating to different countries or businesses migrating or businesses. Setting businesses up, yes. uh, my, uh, like they would like to have more ease of doing business. And currently UAE is op offering that kind of opportunity. And that's why people are, uh, or businesses are moving there. So that right, can right. be a simplified reason for it. Yeah. And another, apart... another statistic, another huh. statistic that I would like to share with all your viewers right now huh. is that in the year 2022, okay. Indians as an in Indian citizens have invested more than $4 billion in the real estate sector of UAE. Now this hmm. is the official figure given by the RBI. And that is why now there is TCS also, which is going to come from 1st October which says that 20% has to be first deduct, uh, has to be collected at source. And then only you can make your remittances. So right. If you want to send hundred thousand dollars, you first have to pay $20,000 to the government treasury. Then you are allowed to send hundred thousand dollars. So, uh, so if, if there are Indians who have invested $4 billion or more in real estate in UAE itself, then there is some ease of doing business over there. Probably, you know, a person who's doing business, if he's parking money in a country, maybe he believes that there is ease of doing business in that country. Right. Right. And about that rule of that, you know, TCS, that is also something which is very, uh, like the way it started and way the way it ended, it Correct. shows Correct. that how uh, ill prepared or uh, ill, ill planned we are as a, yes. you know, this kind of bureaucracy, because when Correct. it started, it was like first July say, 
एंड देन तभी बोला था कि सब ट्रैवल पे भी लगेगा एंड ऑल दोज थिंग्स एंड देन लेटर दे सेड कि नहीं फिर क्रेडिट कार्ड पे नहीं लगेगा इस पे लगेगा एंड देन नाउ देयर इज अ लिमिट एंड नाउ इट इज लाइक फ्रॉम फर्स्ट ऑफ अक्टूबर सो लाइक इट शोज द शोज दैट वी आर नॉट प्लानिंग अवर इवन uh policies accordingly in terms of at least Correct. the ease of doing business and this is not even that this was not even business it was just the traveling so if even if we want to travel that was also kind of Correct. a problematic thing because you Correct. Correct. as a person as a common person you will be like yaar main travel karu ya ye tcs or tds or ye sab bharte baitho so that is also something which yeah. is uh creating a problem so now let's go to crypto part how did that start yeah. Uh, first and foremost, I'll say that I don't deal in crypto at all. I still feel mutual funds are safe. So my savings <laughs> are parked in mutual funds. I don't invest in crypto, nor do I trade in crypto. But uh, yeah, crypto also started somewhere around 2016 only or 17, hmm. uh, when uh, uh, when a friend of mine wanted to invest in crypto. Uh, he's an NRI. He lives in the US, and he said, "Wait, you know, there's something called uh, Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is going to be the future." And uh, I, I personally told him that you know it could probably be like a Ponzi scheme or something, which I was not aware of at that time. so mm-hmm. i told him that you know uh, it's it's best you stay away from that and if you really want to invest i'll uh, invest in the economy of india invest in the mutual funds you'll get good returns so he still insisted a lot he said that vivek uh, he's a childhood friend of mine and he said vivek i really want to buy just tell me how can i buy rest whatever has to be done will be done from my side i only want to know which is one of the most dependable sources from where i can buy okay so i did my research found that there was some exchange in canada uh, which uh, which seemed to be the best amongst the rest so mm-hmm. i told him that you know with no liability or responsibility of mine you know i started accountants we give disclaimers so i said with no liability or responsibility of mine if you still want to invest you can buy from there this is not investment advice is not financial advice as a disclaimers ke sath i told him and eventually he bought over there then i asked him what was what was he going to do with that so he said that he yeah. had to pay someone some amount of money and that person had asked him for that uh, amount to be paid in cryptocurrency acha that's when i realized the potential of this technology because cross border payments could be done using a financial instrument which was mm. neither regulated nor governed nor owned by any person so that's mm. when i thought that this could be a big challenge to banks and because it was a challenge to the financial system and to the banking system uh, i realized that this could be the next big thing mm. i started reaching out to senior chartered accountants and i told them that you know sir let's pay us sir or madam let's pay attention to this thing because this is going to revolutionize the way payments industry is going to work and once payments are affected or banking is affected or financial systems are affected it is definitely chartered accountants who will have to adapt to those changes right because eventually auditing is done on the financial system in the banks concurrent audit stat audit and internal audit and what not and how do how do chartered accountants perform their duties when they themselves wouldn't know what blockchain is right so that's when i started uh, researching about blockchain i reached out to people i spoke to people and then uh, then one fine day someone one organization invited me to deliver a speech on blockchain to a group of chartered accountants so okay. i spoke over there and they were also thrilled first they refused to believe that there could be something like this they said mm-hmm. ke without rbi permission how will the money go out without uh-huh. rbi reporting form a form 15 ca cb and without uh, uh, submitting documents to the bank how can the transaction happen so that's when i said that there is a need for regulation and i've been saying that since 2017 early 2017 i've been saying this and that th- that this is something which has to be regulated i have also given my submissions or my observations and finding findings to the ministry of finance there is a particular committee which is working on this i have uh, submitted my uh, submission uh, observations over there but uh, having said that still the government has failed to introduce any regulation pertaining to cryptocurrencies i will reiterate cryptocurrencies in india are only tax but they are not regulated nor as a government rbi sebi ministry of finance or any other quasi judicial body announced whether it is legal or illegal so even if anyone right. is trading in cryptocurrencies or doing it at your own risk and peril government has only clarified that they have the sovereign right to tax the profits but whether it is legal or illegal wo aaj tak kisi ne kisi bhi authority ne ya kisi bhi department ne aaj tak clarify nahi kiya hai so anyone who's dealing in that they are they are in uh, uh, they are in the gray area right now hmm. so that's how i got into crypto and uh, again uh, uh, seeing that there is no regulation and seeing that there is absolutely uh, uh, absolutely no clarity on whether crypto transactions are legal or illegal i, I suggested all my uh, clients and friends to move out of the country and move to a jurisdiction where there was clarity right so if the if the stakes are high if the volume of trading is high if you're making above a certain amount of money then it makes sense to shift from one jurisdiction to another jurisdiction where you are guaranteed that this is a legal activity i always tell my clients always follow the law of the land and be on the right side of the law 
if hmm. you cannot follow the uh, law of the land you can either change the land or hmm. be on the wrong side of the law because right. you cannot change the law law change karne ka power aapke hath mein nahi hai lekin land change karne ka power aapke hath mein hai hmm. and is that the reason people are going to uae also yes certainly 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 nobody wants to be on the wrong side of the law hmm. and if i am advising someone i highly recommend uh, all of them to be on the right side of the law in whichever land they are मतलब आपको क्रिप्टो का ही काम करना है तो गो टू कंट्री वेर डूइंग क्रिप्टो ट्रेडिंग फ्लोटिंग योर ओन क्रिप्टो करेंसी और मिंटिंग माइनिंग एनएफटीज गेम फाइव डी फाइव एवरीथिंग इज लीगल आप उस कंट्री में जाके काम कीजिए बिकॉज इन इंडिया द गवर्नमेंट हैज रिफ्यूज टू क्लैरिफाई वेदर इट इज लीगल और इलीगल एंड द डे इंडिया सेज दैट इट इज लीगल आई एम श्योर अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल विल कम बैक फ्रॉम वेर एवर दे आर बैक टू इंडिया एंड सेटल डाउन इन इंडिया एंड रन दिस इज इन इंडिया only and only due to policy paralysis hmm. a lot of people had to leave the country and go to a country where it is legal right right around crypto only so what are your actual views about crypto like are you in favor of or against or whatever like what are your thoughts about crypto uh, so uh, crypto is a highly risky asset class if it is categorized as an asset class in india it is categorized as virtual digital assets hmm. so any vdas are always high risk investments so if you want to put money in it put only as much as you can afford to lose hmm. and again I, i will give a disclaimer this is neither financial or investment advice nor is this professional advice but yeah. if people really want to put money i say it should not be anything more than 1 to 2% of the net liquid wealth that they have liquid hmm. assets liquid wealth ka 1 to 2% is maximum that you should put not more than that okay okay and uh, what what do you think about the cbdc the new kind of thing that has you know started around uh, all over the world so the okay. central bank digital currency so yes yes what are uh, so, crypto, so crypto is a decentralized technology where the power is with the users hmm. okay as of now cbdcs are central bank digital currencies which are not decentralized they hmm. may be on blockchain so on blockchain there are multiple applications you can have medical insurance on blockchain you can have a uh, property registration on blockchain you can have uh, uh, you can have health records on blockchain you can have multiple aspects on blockchain cbdc which the government or the rbi is claiming that it is a it is like a, a cryptocurrency which is on a blockchain or which is uh, not a cryptocurrency it is a digital currency the thing is that it is a centralized currency that is to say that somebody has power hmm. in bitcoin nobody can control what is the amount of bitcoin that you have in your wallet right nobody can snatch it away nobody can say that this particular denomination note is no longer acceptable in cryptocurrency so the yeah. problem with any form of centralized currency or a fiat currency is that it is controlled in a particular manner whereas cryptocurrencies are not controlled in a particular manner i am not going in the fact whether currency whether the issuing currency is a sovereign function or not but i am saying what cryptocurrencies are cryptocurrencies are decentralized all other currencies are centralized the power is in the right. hands of one organization or department correct correct so though though it is like a bridge between cryptocurrencies and between uh, uh, the banking and the financial uh, system hmm. but as of now it it does it is it does not solve the purpose of what cryptocurrencies are doing for example hmm. if a person has one bitcoin okay only one bitcoin hmm. he can he or she can transfer value of that worth of one bitcoin to any other person or place in the world within a matter of a few seconds and at a hmm. cost which is just a fragment of what the cost of the cost that you would have had to pay to your banks hmm. when you go to the bank let's say you go to any uh, any traditional bank in india or any of the top 5 or top 10 banks firstly they'll ask you to fill form a2 of the rbi then they will ask you to get a chartered accountant certificate in form 15 cscb after that if you still go to the bank probably there there will be a bank holiday or and if you go to any nationalized banks they might be on lunch time yeah assuming there is no lunch time no bank holiday no nationalized holiday no festival and there is no gst due date for chartered accountants to issue certificates otherwise because cas are quite busy because of gst compliances assuming all of that if you still manage to get the documents in time and mm. let's say you initiate the transaction on a monday Hmm. This uh, through the Swift network, which is an international wire transfer network, it takes T plus two. Okay. For that, your bank will convert your INR into USD. There are charges for conversion. If you are a small customer, bank will charge you card rate, which is anywhere between one rupees to two point five rupees per dollar. Hmm. After that, your bank will uh, after that the Swift network will charge you something called as a correspondent bank charges, and then network fee that could be anywhere between ten to twenty ten to twenty dollars. finally the money reaches the recipient's country 
the recipient's country will also deb debit its charges to the receiver and conversion mm -hmm. charges to the receiver. Mm -hmm. Now in the entire process, a lot of money gets eaten up. Right. In cryptocurrency, that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. In cryptocurrency, at a cost of less than two or three dollars, you can send money from one country to another country without so much time and without so much uh, expenditure. Mm -hmm. So that is why cryptocurrency, that is why there is adoption of a technology. Correct. Now, now CBDCs will not be able to do this right now as things stand today with the infrastructure and with the kind of uh, uh, network that is there, CBDCs will not be useful in solving these kind of real life problems. Let's assume you have a family member who is in the US and is hmm. urgently in need of money. You will never be able to send money in less than 10 seconds. Never. Aap kitna bhi try kar lije. Koi bhi bank ke through kije, koi bhi network ke through kije. In less than 10 seconds, you cannot send money. And at a cost of less than $10, you will not be able to send money. Hmm. So cryptocurrency is solving a real life problem. Probably it also pro creates a creates a new real life problem that you know people might start sending money illegally, illegitimately. Uh, I'm sure that's a different uh, that's a discussion for a different day. But right. technology is good. My point is that technology must be adopted. Hmm. And I, I'm not saying this. This was told on the floor of the house by the then finance minister, late Sri Arun Jaitley ji, hmm. after his budget speech somewhere in 2016 or 17. He, on the floor of the house, said that India does not recognize cryptocurrency as legal tender, but India will look to explore the benefits of blockchain technology. So mm -hmm. since 2016, like 2023, I think government could not uh, introduce a legislation which could regulate cryptocurrencies. So I think that is a collective failure of uh, organizations like SEBI, which has allowed cryptocurrency exchanges to work in India without yeah. any recognition. Without any, uh, without any responsibility towards the investors, hmm. uh, 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 through someone like an RBI, if RBI, ha if if the power of issuing currencies with the RBI, RBI has still not clarified whether the ones who are issuing their own private currencies are legal or illegal. RBI ne bhi itna kaha that they are not legal tender. SEBI, SEBI on the contrary has also not regulated cryptocurrencies because SEBI feels that these are not securities, nor bonds, nor currencies, nor yeah. any other form of financial instrument. Yeah. So SEBI. RBI, uh, Ministry of Finance, all of them have collectively failed in bringing about any regulation or legislation related to cryptocurrencies. But again, as I say, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully, maybe in the next five years, 10 years, or maybe next 20 years, there could be some regulation. But till then, you True. can go to some other country where there is a regulation, make money, create your wealth, and then you can always come back to India whenever the government or whenever the bureaucracy decides to regulate it in India. Yeah, uh, just to add yeah. to your point. Uh, there were even advertisements during IPL about crypto. So that was also not regulated by anybody. Like, because like people Correct. have not known, like, is this legal or illegal, but there are still ads running. So that was, oh, I will tell you, there, of... were, there were front page advertisements in yeah. reading newspapers yeah. of these crypto exchanges. Yeah. Now, firstly, my, my, my issue with uh, this is that before you call yourself as an exchange, SEBI has a has a detailed list of guidelines which you have to follow. Like you and I cannot start an exchange. Mm. If you and I want to start an exchange, we have to apply to SEBI to get recognition as a recognized stock exchange or mm. a recognized exchange. There are at least 50 or 100 criteria which you have to fulfill. There has to be a net worth criteria. You need to have a mechanism, uh, a compliance mechanism in place. You need to have checks and balances. You need to have prior experience. So there are many criteria which you have to fulfill. And then only you can call yourself as an exchange. But these homegrown exchanges, who, my point is who allowed them to call themselves as an exchange. Jo yeah. ek aam hota, ek chota investor hota hai, he will think that SEBI is regulating them. RBI yeah. is regulating them. He does not know. Usse to sirf ek financial influencer jo YouTube pe aata hai aur bolta hai ke, ab, dosto, ye cryptocurrency kharid lije aur mera coupon code istamal kije aapko 500 rupay ki cryptocurrency free mein milegi. Ah, ah. He, they don't understand he's paid to say yeah. this. This is clear and daylight deceiving small investors. Yeah, right. And unfortunately, unfortunately, SEBI has turned a blind eye to this. All uh, entire bureaucratic bureaucratic setup has turned a blind eye to this. True. So let's go out of our heated discussion about this because sure. we don't want to, uh, as in this is not related to this kind of podcast. So let us go back to our own discussion about the CAs and practicing uh, chartered accountants. So now yes. the you have clarified what things you do or how, what are the areas in which you work. So right now, tell us like, what are the different things, different challenges that you are facing in these areas? And if someone yeah. 
is interested in these areas, the areas where you are working in, what are the things you should or she should look forward to or, you know, yeah. understand first of all, ki like if you want to understand X, then you should know Y, something like that. Sure. And uh, uh, just like as a guidance to them, what things you can tell them that you should know this, you should know that, please uh, take care of all these sure. X, Y, Z things. So like yeah. uh, what, what are those things would you like to so say? So for those, for those who want to get into forensic audit, my suggestion is that you should have the principles of internal audit learned really very well because hmm. forensic audit at some format and at some level is an extension of your internal audit. Okay. And of course now ICI is one of the first bodies in the world to issue something called as a forensic accounting and investigation standards, FAIS. So, so, so read that material. It's, it's ex very well drafted, excellent uh, draft material that you have for forensic uh, standards. That's one. Second, for chartered accountants, for Indian chartered accountants, I would suggest that they could also do the FAFD course because that adds credibility to your skills. Okay. What is that and course? Third, uh, forensic accounting and uh, fraud detection, FAFD. It is okay. a course, post qualification course uh, uh, conducted by ICI. It is, uh, and uh, there are two exams that you have to give and clear. Once hmm. you uh, clear it, you get the FAFD certification from the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. So I highly recommend uh, chartered accountants to pursue that course for those who want to get into this field because it adds credibility to the work that you will do. Hmm. For those who want to work at an international level in the field of forensics, you can do something called as a, a CFE. CFE okay. is one of the degrees uh, related to forensic or related to fraud examination. So, so do the CFE degree uh, uh, and it will give you very good exposure. They have some, they have, their curriculum is excellent. You will get good exposure. You will learn a lot of things. And again, at a global level, it will again add more credibility to the work that you're doing. Okay. But in spite of that, before doing these two also, if you want to do anything in forensics, my suggestion is that try reading books and try reading resources related to forensics. Okay. You will get a lot of insights. Wow. And I would highly recommend you to, uh, I would highly recommend you to read books on this topic. And uh, I, I, I'm, I personally believe that will give you, uh, that will give you, that will ignite an interest in your mind. Hmm. to pursue this as a career option for those who are in international taxation uh, because international taxation there are two countries involved in whatever form of international transaction you are doing or whatever form of transaction structuring you are doing hmm. having some basic knowledge of the target country is also important as far as india is concerned you probably know because there are chartered accountant and you are uh, in this field so you may already have knowledge about hmm. the indian provisions but also try to get a perspective about what their local laws are I will hmm. share a very small example. A client of mine was acquiring a company in Malaysia. Hmm. Now, when it, when, when it came to acquiring a company in Malaysia, I was required to understand at least the basic structure of the in income tax act. Correct. Otherwise, how do you suggest or how do you, when you sit on, on the table, how do you propose hmm. uh, what, what has to be done? Similarly, uh, you should also know laws about, uh, you should also have some knowledge about the past deals that have been done between those two countries. Is there a DTWA between India and that country? Try to read the DTWA. You will also get a lot of insights when you read the DTWA of India with that country. India, by the way, has okay. DTWAs with a lot of countries. Hmm. Uh, it may not be possible to understand and remember all of them, but at least when you have a particular assignment, uh, try to read that. That will give you good knowledge. As far as UAE business is concerned, uh, friends, there is a huge opportunity for Indian chartered accountants in UAE. In 2018, when VAT was introduced, there mm. was a demand for 5,000 Indian chartered accountants over there. Okay. And people have actually moved. Maybe the statistics or the data of ICA may not show because not everyone updates their address from an Indian address Correct. to a UE address. But you uh, have your latest KYC know your, uh, or KYM, you have not done your KYM. But yeah. having said that, uh, uh, if you have updated, it will, show it, the, it will reflect in ICA database. So my suggestion to all of them would be that uh, try and understand the law. Now, when corporate tax has come, it is a very naive country as far as taxation is concerned and compare that to India, which is a very matured country from a taxation perspective. Like we right. have laws, we have amendments, we have notifications, we have case laws, so on and so forth. Their country is at a very naive stage right now, at a very hmm. preliminary stage. Just to share a perspective, hmm. UAE VAT law, the federal decree law is only 55 pages. Oh. So the <laughs> the UAE corporate tax law is also around 57-58 pages. 
अगेन उससे ज्यादा अपने में इनकम टैक्स में अमेंडमेंट होते हैं सो राइट देर इज नथिंग विच प्रोहिबिट यू फ्रॉम लर्निंग अव लॉ एंड स्पेशली वेन इट इज इजी एंड इट इज एक्सट्रीमली सिंपल इधर वहां के वैट मेन यू वैट इधर यू गेट क्रेडिट और यू डोंट गेट क्रेडिट दैट्स इट एंड देर इज फ्लैट रेट इधर इट इज जीरो परसेंट और इट इज फाइव परसेंट इट इज नॉट लाइक ट्वेंटी एट परसेंट एटीन परसेंट ट्वेल्व परसेंट इफ अ होटल रूम इज अब सेवन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड देर इज सेपरेट रेट बिलो सेवन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड देर इज सेपरेट रेट इफ इट इज अ चैरिटेबल ट्रस्ट देन प्रोबेबली देर इज नो जी एस टी सो सो एंड एंड इन इंडिया मल्टीपल सिटी राइट मल्टीपल रेट राइट ट्वेंटी एट है ट्वेल्व है एटीन है फाइव है Uh, on gold, I think it is three percent. On diamonds, it is zero point two five percent. So on and so forth, right? And somewhere it is one percent. So on and so forth. No duplicity. Yeah. Single rate five percent. Yeah. And corporate tax also is flat one percent. Uh, sorry, flat nine percent of your net profit okay. after expenditure. Ah, uh, flat up to up to up to one lakh two thousand dollars. मतलब three hundred and seventy five thousand dirhams. Three lakh seventy five thousand dirhams. Sir, there is a basic exemption limit. Which is also okay. quite high compared compared that to in India. मतलब uh, the the basic exemption limit itself is very high over there. Three lakh seventy five thousand dirhams tak, which is one lakh two thousand dollars. You pay zero taxes even if you make a profit. Above three lakh seventy five thousand dirhams, then you pay nine percent on the balanced profit. Okay. Yes. So for people who are looking to business, it is actually a uh, now it is a tax jurisdiction. So nobody can say it's a tax haven or anything or it's a low tax uh, country. There is a uh, there is a standard rate of nine percent. on all businesses and in free zones they have certain exemptions also so just understand the basic structure of the taxation in hmm. uae and i think you're good to go got it got it and about about yeah. the crypto uh, firstly there is not much awareness about how crypto taxation works in india hmm. so people who are the end users or clients they and who are not aware about the law they think that if you make profits in crypto and you make losses in crypto you can set them off you cannot acha okay you cannot set them off You buy Bitcoin today, sell Bitcoin today. You make a profit. Let's hmm. say ten thousand rupees. Hmm. You buy Bitcoin tomorrow, sell Bitcoin tomorrow. You make a loss of five thousand rupees. People think that you have to pay taxes only on five thousand rupees after setting off. Acha. Whereas haan, that haan. is not the case. The government oh. has clarified in the Rajya Sabha when uh, uh, when two members of the opposition parties had asked questions haan. that uh, what do you mean by no set off? Can same pair losses be set off? so to which the honorable minister of state for finance mos finance clarified that even same pair profits and losses cannot be set off and different pair losses and profits can also be not be set off that is oh. to say that you made 10000 rupees profit and you made 5000 rupees loss so your net your net tax liability will be 3000 rupees 10000 hmm. pe you pay 30% that is 3000 jo 5000 usko aap side pe rakh dijiye usko set off nahi kar dijiye so basically Now, huh. नहीं Then mm-hmm. I generally call this scheme as nationalization of profits and privatization of losses. Loss है तो आपका है, profit है तो वो देश का है. Good, good term. So, ah, अभी ये सब में what, how yeah. a particular chartered accountant who he or she is into practice can get the clients. Yes. How to expand yes. that horizon? कि अभी they might be you know into the same old uh, tax audit, या फिर they might be in Correct. some other things Correct. and but they are. at a very smaller level and they don't know how to get such kind of clients ki someone who is wa- uh, wanting to set up a uae business aisa client sabko nahi milta matlab i don't i, I don't know fair what enough, fair enough so then fair yeah. enough i think it's a very legitimate concern that your viewers hmm. may have and i think you are asked a very good question pehla client kaisa aayega pehla aayega to pehla usko recommend karega to dusra to aa jayega pehla kaise aayega ha so pehla kaise aayega uske liye my suggestion to you would be either you talk in seminars or mm-hmm. you write blogs and third you become active on social media my okay. my funda for all chartered accountants listening to this uh, podcast is that be a net creator of content don't be consumer of content aap mm-hmm. content banate jaiye aur dalte jaiye and use hashtags hashtags are a very powerful way to make your presence be felt in a field which you probably are not there right now 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल आपने यू ए के कॉर्पोरेट टैक्स पे आर्टिकल लिखा तो यूज द रेलिवेंट हैश टैक्स पुट दो रेलिवेंट हैश टैक्स पुट अस पुट अस पिक्चर मेक इट मेक इट लुक अटल इंटरेस्टिंग make a video around it if you want to speak about it and upload it on linkedin uh, it's a very powerful tool you get real business uh, from there so try out these things uh, probably when when people see your content repetitively they hmm. probably might reach out to you in fact isn't it the way isn't it because of uh, linkedin that you reached out to me yeah yeah right so you found me on linkedin right because i'm i'm putting this information constantly on my social media handles we got connected similarly Correct. i have connected with multiple other people through linkedin and through other social media channels so my mm-hmm. suggestion to you is that you need to create content you never know who's going to reach out to you right you probably could get a client from there and so that's one way that's the organic way and second right. you can always talk and pitch about the additional services that you plan to provide to your cl- existing clients mm. if you think that your existing client is in the business of import or export you probably can tell him why don't you have one office in ua Hmm. not that he has to start business over there india ka business rakho lekin wahan pe bhi business karo correct yeah so you could you could you could pitch to your clients you can if if there is a problem address the problem but if there is no problem at least show that there is some other thing that can be done better reach out to your existing clients i think that that you that would help you to get uh, your first client in these non traditional areas of practice got got so now i'll ask you some rapid fire kind of questions okay yeah. So first question article ship yeah. in big four or top firms versus mid size firm mid size doing usual roles with decent or higher pay versus taking a pay cut and learning something new learning something new with a low pay okay different degree while doing ca or after doing ca one should approach for a different degree or not uh, doing any other uh, study or higher studies at all uh, concentrate on ca first and then pursue other other degrees okay So, what's the problem in no- pursuing non-traditional roles, not knowing what are the different opportunities, or not having the enough resources or guidance to make these things happen? I think it's about uh, guidance and mentoring. So, if you get a good mentor, you will definitely pursue what you like. Okay, doing business in India versus not doing business in India. I would say doing business in UAE. Okay, <laughs> CBDC or crypto or just the regular fiat currency. Ah, uh, it's a tough one, but I will say. Uh, Uh, uh traditional fiat currencies or regular currencies okay uh so that's uh, the rapid fire round so to yeah. say so you said that um, mid size firm so is it because you uh like you didn't like the big four experience or what was the reason behind that ah uh, no so i personally loved the big four experience i learned a lot and i actually give a lot of credit to my success to the learnings that happened in the big four but my my scope was limited only to one department and only to one set of clients i was in the audit department of one of the big four and i worked only on a certain set of clients whereas i think if i would have got little bit of exposure about taxation because i started my practice immediately right and mm-hmm. i had knowledge only about audit i did not have knowledge about taxation i did not have knowledge about service tax or vat which was there at that time or gst which is there right now so uh, i had to do a lot of learning and spend a lot of time to learn some things which are so basic Hmm. which i could not have learned in uh, in the big four where i work but had i been in a mid size firm believe me my learnings would have been much higher okay uh, you got the first experience uh, of the forensic due to a particular client but now as we have also also spoke on about you know how to get the first client and you said that these are yes. the two three things that a person can do so on the same lines like how to get the guidance from for understanding different okay. roles you might understand ki what you don't want to do okay because say hmm. like audit, audit tax kuch article ship mein acha nahi laga to you might decide ki mere ko ye nahi karna even if it is wrong right that is different part like you might have a liking for it but just because of yeah. your experience you are saying such things but audit tax nahi karna hai to kya karna hai so that kind of right. uh, question everyone comes across and uh, how sure. to approach that question so do you have right. any thoughts about that Yes, so I will give a very detailed answer to this question of yours. Uh, I personally believe that having a mentor is one of the best uh, decisions that you could take for yourself, for your career, and for your growth. So find the right kind of mentor. Mentoring will uh, help you to get into the field that you want to. So if you want to get into forensic audit, try to find a mentor who can advise you on how to get into forensic audit or who is already into forensic audit. So try to find a mentor from the field in which you want to get, and mentoring works beautifully well. Like very early. I had a mentor who advised me to get into certain fields. Who are who told me 
which fields not to enter into, what kind of clients not to take. So I'm always thankful to my mentor. That's great. That's great. And last question is, you do you have any recommendations? It could be anything again, movie recommendation, book recommendation, yeah. some documentary, some podcast, some sure, anything, sure. anything. Certainly. So I would highly recommend everyone to read certain books. Uh, first is Thinking Fast and Slow. Hmm. Second is Atomic Habits. Third yeah. is The Psychology of Money. The hmm. fourth is The Richest Man in Babylon. Read these four okay. books. I love all of them. Movies I would recommend uh, watch The Wolf of, of the Wall Street. Okay. Some massive learnings, some uh, some dialogues are so hard hitting that you will never forget them for the rest of your life. Awesome. Thank you. It was really, really wonderful talking to you, Vivek. And I hope like people learn from this and take some inspiration from you and you know go and set up business in UAE or somewhere else and maybe deal with deal in crypto or whatever thank you once again yeah absolutely my pleasure i would request i would request all your viewers to follow me on my social media handles and connect with yeah. me i'll be yeah. very happy to advise you wherever i can thank you so much for having me on the show thank bye you.